Man and Machine is brought to you by Shannon's Insurance for Motoring Enthusiasts. Yeah, baby! Back in 2015, we teamed up with Ross from Survivor Car Magazine to take a look at a hidden gem that had been stored away for nearly 30 years. We couldn't believe what we saw before our very eyes. Covered in years of accumulated dust was an original Red Pepper XAGT sedan, just waiting there to be rescued. Original trim, four-speed top loader, original 351 Clevo and all numbers matching. Everywhere we looked, our hearts were racing, with all the signs of an honest machine. Ross and I were doing backflips. This car was the real deal, and they called it Mothball. Neil, the lucky owner. Wanted to unload the car, and he was wanted a couple of dollars. He was running short of a few year bob, and he came around and see me and said, would you be interested in buying the car? So I gave him $5,000 for the car. The registration ran out, and then I just drove it into the backyard. So there we pushed it into this particular shed and there it has stayed since that day. So back in 1987 for three months we drove it around and then from that particular point it has not moved a wheel. Dave, Neil's best mate. We didn't know the exact house or address or even name of the original owner at that time. And we spent nights, nights, weeks, just walking the streets, knocking on doors to see if anybody owned a red 72 GT. And, um, oh, we got chased, <laughs> we got barked at. He said it was a panel beater or a mechanic that lived close to uh, uh, Holmes Ford where they, they bought it. And we shopped around all of the panel beaters. Finally found one, oh yes, that's, I know the car, I know the person, and how do you know that? <laughs> This is my brother. So that's the way we, we, we traced it back. Pat, the very first owner. Yeah, the Phase 4 was coming out. I thought, oh, I'll go for that one. It has to be a little bit better than the Phase 3 type of thing. Anyway, I went to the, to the Ford dealership. It was close by. And um, yeah, tried to order one. They told me it was um, unavailable anymore because of the government cracked down on the high speed cars and that, so, so I just settled on the ordinary GT and had a couple of modifications done through the factory. I bought a house, it was a brand new house and had no garage, no landscaping, no nothing. And uh, I had to sell it to build a garage. I'd love to buy it back though. Well, three years has gone by and Mothball is still here in the shed in the very same state. But Neil's had a fantastic opportunity come his way to display this car to the general public at the Shannon Survivor Car and Barn Fine Show Spectacular. But there's one problem. How are they going to get this thing out of here? You've got the swimming pool blocking off driveway access. You've got vegetation. All of this was built well after this car was put in their shed. How are they going to get it out? Let's go and find out. So Neil, what's been called the holy grail of Falcon GT barn finds, Mothball, is about to be exhumed from the tomb. It is. It's going to see the light of day after about 30 odd years. Survivor Car Magazine contacted me and asked me whether they could use the car to go on display at a car show for Shannon's over there in Heatherton. So I said, that's not a problem at all, but the, you have an issue. I said, it's uh, getting the car out of the garage. So Survivor Car Australia, came out and asked me whether it'd be all right to take the back of the garage down and the fence and push it out into the backyard of next door and crane it out into the street. Crane it out. Crane it out? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I suppose all these years ago, you never really thought this scenario was going to happen where the car would be blocked in. 
Because you weren't using it, you weren't driving it, so you went into storage. Correct. In the infancy, we, we put the uh, car in here and then we built a pool, but we weren't hemmed in back then because we had access to the neighbouring properties. But over the years that have gone by, they've built extensions, carports. I said, well, maybe the, the inheritance, the kids would take care of that when the time comes. <laughs> okay. But things changed, didn't they? <laughs> they did. Over the last few years, mm -hmm. yourself and Dave, yes. who I believe is sadly passed away now. Just, just recently, did, yes. Did quite a bit of research on this car and uncovered a whole lot of interesting things, didn't you? Well, we believe they're very significant things, actually. Um, if you can recall, uh, I think your last show, I mentioned to you that somebody mentioned to us that the guards on the car were wider than a normal Falcon. So Dave and I happened to be browsing the web and we came across this memo from Ford. It was a bulletin that was sent out to the dealers indicating that the Phase 4, XAGT Phase 4, was now in production. And there was a description of the car under the heading body indicated that the front and rear fenders, the American term, were to be modified or widened to take the larger wheels. And with that, uh, bells began to ring. You know, we, we, Dave and I thought, well, this chap said that the guards look wider. We have this memo. So we went out and measured up a number of XAGT Falcons and came back with the uh, results that this car here, the front guards are 10 millimetres wider than the normal XA's and 20 millimetres wider at the back, 20 millimetres either side. Wow. So we thought... So well, it's like they've been pumped. Well, either that or they've manufactured that. I don't know how they've gone about <laughs> that, but that's what we've discovered. Um, so with that, I, I rang the gentleman, by the way, that signed that particular memo off and asked him about the, uh, what was described about the car and he said, whatever is on that memo was happening in the car and it was in production. As it said at the start of the letter, it says, Dear gentlemen, the phase four is now in production. Not was, not going to be, but now. So I confirmed that with him and he said, yes, whatever's on that memo was the case. And I was surprised when I ran the gentleman, he was still about, all due respects, you know. And by the way, we've come across a document from CAMS back in early 72, I think about March, that has given forth the permission to race their HO if they come up with 200 cars. Could this have been the same body that was allocated on the line? I mean, they did offload a lot of those phase four components into all sorts of vehicles, you know, things from exhaust systems, even engines, all sorts of parts went into fair lanes and all types of vehicles to get rid of that inventory that was actually lined up for the project. But I, I don't know whether Ford, if a body's been formed and manufactured, would they throw away 200 bodies for the sake of, you know, a few inches on the guards. I mean, it doesn't make the car go any quicker or slower. But moving on with that, we uh, went on with our research and we rung up uh, Bowden's and asked them to measure their car up. So the they've race got car. an original phase four, haven't they? One well, of the Yeah, one of the race fours. cars. And they came back with the same measurements, believe it or not, as, as, the, as the mothball. Wow. <laughs> There's 200 cars that were going to be manufactured, 200 HOs manufactured, which is I think well known, 100, in 100 cars at the end of June, the last week of June, and another 100 cars at the last week of July. The date on the steering column is actually when the car was manufactured, and the date on the steering column is the last week of July. So wow. all these links in the chain <laughs> lining up. are lining up. So I'll, I'll leave it to other people's conclusion whether you, 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 this could have been a phase four body, but I can assure you we know the car has come from the factory the way it is today. We've had that confirmation from the owners, the previous owners, and I haven't done anything to it, of course. So you're not actually claiming that this car is a GTHO Phase 4. What would be awesome if we could get someone that was working on the project back in the day to elaborate on some of this information, this mystery of the Phase 4. That'd be fantastic. So this is first port of call for removal. Neil, the back of the shed. It is, Glenn. They're going to pull the fence down, remove the tree, Remove the back of the garage here, have access to the car, pull it out here into the neighbouring property, on the back lawn here, a crane's going to come over, pick up the car and take it over the house onto the street out the front. So there's a bit of work there, I mean you're lucky it wasn't actually a brick shed. Fortunately, it? yeah, it shouldn't take too much to do but we're going to get into it now. Sounds good mate, let's do it. <laughs>
Sam? Yeah. 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 A little bit more. Watch, don't forget about watching the left hand side of the car. Yeah, that's yeah. where I am. Yeah, that's that's that. That brick. A little bit. That, a little it. bit more. That's it. That's it. Okay. Right, hold stop. There, hold there. Good roll. Good. Here we go. Easy now. Here we go. All right. All right. Alan, fantastic to have you here for this momentous occasion. What a magnificent spectacle this machine is. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I, uh, all I can see is uh, a windscreen full of mud. <laughs> uh, when we get it all tidied up, it'll be a real runner, that's for sure. A V8 engine that can't go wrong. I'd be very happy to see how everything turns out with this car when, when it's uh, revitalized. Pat, as the original owner of this car, the man that ordered it brand new, how amazing is this to see this car out in the daylight after all these years? Uh, I never expected to see it uh, again, but uh, the way it turned out, they looking for me, looking for me, looking for me. Eventually they found me and uh, yeah, we exchanged some uh, f facts and figures. Yeah. I mean, most people buy a car, they drive it for a while, they on sell it, like you say, never see it again. But to see something like this entombed and all those memories that you have of this car, pretty epic isn't it? Very, very epic. I, I still can't believe it. I mean, it, uh, It's surreal isn't the it? Way, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had it that way so I still had it but the way it is, yeah. And the boys did unturn some amazing information. The car is a bit of a mystery. I know that you did order a phase four. four that was the right. plan. Yeah. And then obviously they chopped it and said yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so I settled on a, the GT and uh, with a few of the little bits on it. Just a little bit to the left, Alan. Got one behind. Oh. Happy there? All right. Good. Neil, how's it feel to see your baby leaving home? Well, I can. Uh, I'm beginning to pinch myself now. The reality's here, and it's come out of that uh, out of that shed after 30 odd years. And uh, I was just saying to uh, to Ross that uh, eh, it's become a bit of a tear jerker now. You know, as I said, the reality set in now, and um, I'm looking forward for the rest of the ride. Yeah. I mean, it's really become a piece of the furniture really here at home. It's. Uh, I suppose you could call it an ornament. It's been locked in that position for so many years. It's amazing, isn't it? It has. It has. It is. It is. It, uh, it could have gone long ago for, for whatever reason, fate, whatever it may be. But it's been here all this time, you know. So um, Thank goodness for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't probably for years, guys. It'd probably be here for another 20 odd years, you know. So, so once it's on display with the, the Shannon's Survivor Car show, yeah. what are your plans for the car? I... Uh, as always, keep on saying time's the enemy, but uh, I think it's about time we got the thing up and up and going. So I'd like to uh, recommission it or refurbish it. That's something and, uh, you and Dave always wanted to do. Yeah, we and did. Sadly, Dave yeah. passed away, and yeah. it'd, be, it'd be nice to do that yeah. for him in, yeah, in honour sure. of it. Yeah. Would be, yeah, yeah. Love to do it. Love to do it. As I just said before, time's the enemy. I don't want to go too much longer now. After it's come back from the show, I think we'll uh, look at uh, you know refurbishing. So recommissioning, and not so much restoration, but just getting it running again. I think you'd be surprised how good the car 
the condition of the car is. Mm. Um, as I said before, we looked for the bullshit going back a number of years ago when, and well, we're pulling the carpets and the floor up, the seats out, looking for the bill sheet. It's in pristine condition. You know, really like brand new. We only found four rust spots in the whole car. <coughs> Excuse me, that's the guards, quarter panels, about the size of a 50 cent piece, 10 cent piece, and, and the same in the front. So really under all this dust, you could wash up quite well. I know it's got battle scars on it. That comes with a car <coughs> sitting around and general driving during its life. But I mean, I, I think it'll polish up all right. Would just, you do that? Just a good cut and polish, I think it'll get it on its way. Yeah, and obviously Other, the engine's going to be locked yeah, up solid yeah, and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it's... Need to clean that up. And the, the brakes, of course, you know, and the, and, and the linings and the uh, all those sort of things that, you know, you would expect to be seized up over the 30 odd years. Mm. But I don't think it's going to be too much involved with it myself. Yep. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah. I knew she was the one. The heart's going a million miles an hour, the mouth's dry. It's love, mate. Pure and simple. In 71, this was the fastest four-door car in the world. Back then, you could pick one up for a bit over four grand. Insurance? It's got to be Shannon's. No one knows your passion like Shannon's. And with our multi-vehicle discount, you can even cover your daily drive. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Okay, up it goes, you ready? Here we go. I think it's been waiting in good time, uh, and what we say that we're going to do the right thing by it yeah. and um, yeah, get it going. It's in the right get hands, it isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you might hand it this year. And, and also, don't forget, this thing's been hemmed in. Mm. You know, it would have been there forever today. As I Most said, people as I said, probably would wouldn't be able to get a crane in like this and do that. The car would be stuck there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't going to be a concern for me because it would have been the, the kids. Yes. Problem, okay, as as, uh, as it would have become a part of their, their, their 
Inheritance? Inheritance. Well, yeah, hopefully you won't have to worry about no, that for no, a while. No. So again, <laughs> you look fit I, I, and dangerous. I'm going to be very thankful to Survivor magazine coming along yes. and ask me could they use the car yep. to go into that Shannon show amongst all the other Survivor cars. As I said, it wouldn't be sitting here now if mm. it wasn't for them. Yep. And, uh, much appreciated. Good those bunch guys, of guys. Yeah. yeah like yeah, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> 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 Come on. Well, it's time for Mothball to hit the road and head to its next destination at Shannon's. It was such an amazing experience to see this machine out in the daylight after all this time. And to see it head off down the road to hit the highway, even if not under its own steam. Let's hope she travels well. It's showtime. For Australia's first ever Shannon Survivor Car and Barn Find Show Spectacular. Housed in this amazing new Shannon showroom and auction house facility located in Heatherton, Victoria. The event was a huge success, with thousands of enthusiasts flooding through the doors to see the largest assembly of survivor cars and barn finds ever seen in this country. Even Alan Moffat was on hand signing autographs for dedicated fans. The massive Shannon showroom floor was loaded with colour and chrome. But the star of the show without a doubt was Mothball, seen in the flesh by the public for the first time in over 30 years. The huge national media coverage leading up to this event had crowds swamping in to see the dust-covered Red Pepper XA GT for two days solid. There were cars from the big three, GM, Ford and Chrysler, but also from Europe and Japan, with enthusiasts taking an emotional trip down memory lane, walking through a sea of cars born of one of the greatest eras of motoring. Just like our good friends at Survivor Car Australia always say, they're still out there. We won't be satisfied alone. Be no compromise. To the hills. Oh, nothing at all. And Feel the rush. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. 